Stretch Internet and Rip and Cable, I'm Marty Ernster at the Doc Weiske Memorial Gymnasium at the Wilmore Center on the Ripon College grounds. We're moments away from tip-off of the Fighting Scots of Monmouth, uh, Illinois, and taking on the Lady Red Hawks. Joining me is head coach of the Lady Red Hawks, Lauren Buzalaki. Coach, welcome. Thanks, Marty. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Uh, you came up with your first conference loss on the road at St. Norbert's last Saturday. Uh, they came out, we were just talking, they came out extremely aggressive on defense, kind of, I don't know, kind of got you on your heels, and it seemed like you never, they never let you breathe and get comfortable into your offense. Yeah, they were way more physical than us, and we just didn't respond. What was weird was we have responded in other games, but we didn't. We had four quarters of not a great response. So mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we got a little bit more physical this week in practice. So we're ready to go. It's been a long wait since Saturday to play. So uh, we're hoping we come in with a ton of energy and really get back to who we are on both ends of the floor. Yeah, and you're going to get a chance to do that against a quality opponent tonight. Uh, with these ladies, they are in second place with an 8-2 and two record, I think, on a five-game win streak of their own. The door goes through Gallus and Turnbull, right? I mean, their offense, everything kind of goes to those young ladies. Tell me about what they like to do offensively, Monmouth. Yeah, Monmouth is just, and he's, Kyle's done a great job with them. They're just a the power there. They run a lot of dribble drive motion, a lot of screens, a lot of handoffs. They're trying to break us down and get to the rim. If they don't break us down and get to the rim, they'll look to pitch. They catch and shoot three. They're shooting well from three this year. That's right. a signature of their program as well. So it'll be another physical team on the offensive end that will have to defend our gaps and defend and contest the defensive arc. So you've had to wait six days to come out of the cage after that uh, hurtful loss. Uh, my understanding, what is the current situation with Allison Leslie? Just a sprained ankle. Sprained ankle? Yep. So the baton was handed off from... Yep. Uh, yep. Okay, uh, hopefully it's not too serious, so you lose some major uh, perimeter offense there. I'm sure you go, you, we'll find out how much depth you have. Yeah, I think it's an awesome opportunity for the rest of our team, and that's, that's what's great about sports. And we yeah, have to rise up the occasion that way, and it's important for our team this next month to you know, give, give other people an opportunity as well. And it's, you know, we're, hoping, we're hoping we're in it for the long term, and tonight will be a great a great chance to see what else we can do. Yeah, that's what happened when Burgess went down. Hey, I want to thank you for your time and the best of luck. Thanks, Marty. Thanks for having Yep. So, for Rippin' Cable and Stretch Internet, I'm Marty Ernster, and we're going to take it up on top for the introductions with Howard and Casey Hansen.
Welcome back to Ripon College Campus where we're getting ready for part two of the Ripon Mammoth contest. The men defeated Mammoth Fighting Scots earlier today. Getting ready for the women's. This is the 48th meeting between these two teams. And started back in uh, 1984-85 season. And uh, Ripon leads the all-time series 29 to 18 and has won six of the last seven games. Mammoth comes into this game averaging 72.9 points a game. Ripon averaging 64.2. Ripon leads the conference to nine and one. And Mammoth is in second place at eight and two. Ripon College and the Midwest Conference welcome you to Midwest Conference Women's Basketball on MWC TV on the Ripon Channel. For more information on how you can watch Midwest Conference action live on your computer, log on to www.midwestconference.org and click on the left-hand side of the screen. Tonight's MWC TV broadcast is being brought to you by Ripon College, Mammoth College, Midwest Conference, Stretch Internet, and the Ripon Channel. Starting lineups are brought to you by Choice Hotels International, the official partner of the starting of the Midwest Conference. <laughs> <laughs> now here's Howard Hanson with your starting lineup. Thank you much, Casey Hanson. And now for the Mammoth College, Scott's number two, a 5'5 sophomore from Peoria, Illinois, Kaylin Omiski. Number four, a 5'2 senior from Santa Ana, California, Yvonne Ornelas. Number 22, a 5'10 senior from Mesa, Arizona, Carly Turnbull. Number 23, a six foot sophomore from Goshen, Indiana, Jordan Kintith. And number 32, a 5'9 senior from Kernville, California, Becca Gallus. The Fighting Scots are under head coaching direction of Kyle Wilson. And now for the Ripon College Redhawks. Number two, a 5'7 senior from Clintonville, Wisconsin, Katie Carpenter. Number five, a 5'9 senior from DeKalb, Illinois, Alyssa Burgess. Number 10, a 5'9 junior from Kingston, Illinois, Jesse Nay. Number 15, a 5'11 freshman from Muskego, Wisconsin, Bonnie Jensen. And number 21, a 5'1 freshman from Clayton, Wisconsin, Kena Fall. The Red Hawks are under the head coaching direction of Lauren Kusalaki. And she is in her seventh season. I yeah. mentioned that we have um, Alyssa Burgess in the lineup. She's back after a few weeks off from yeah. injury. Yeah, and, and it's nice to see that she's back. And just watching her down there in the pregame, you know, she is just as fired as she has ever been. She is ready to play. She is ready to beat this Mammoth team. And like you said, with the, the standings, it's close. Yeah, I mean, looking down through the conference here, ripping on top at 9-1, and one, Mammoth at 8-2. and two, Then it drops down to Cornell at 6-3, and three, Lake Forest at 5-4, and four, Knox College at, and Grinnell College each at 5-5, five and five, Illinois College and St. Norbert College at 4-6, and six, and Lawrence University at two and eight, Boyd College at one and nine, and uh, Red Hawks coming off a tough loss up at St. Norbert last week Saturday. Yeah. So they've had a little bit of time to chew on uh, on that loss, and kind of be interesting to see how they come out here against Mammoth. Yeah, the the, the St. Norbert loss. Yes, it's in the back of their mind because St. Norbert, great team, great ball club. Um, They've just played Rip in the last several years yeah. every time and, they play. And they're under new coaching and direction and, and now. Yeah, yeah, now that Connie Tilly's gone. So Burgess getting ready to jump for the Red Hawks, and I can't quite see the number there for the Mammoth, and it'll be controlled by Mammoth. And we're going to call a jump ball on that. Yeah. It'll belong to Rippon on the alternate possession. Rippon uh, going with a smaller lineup to start this game. Jensen up on top. Get that down to Burgess. She comes up with the 10-footer. Can't get it to go. 
<laughs> Fall oh, comes yeah. from behind, steals that one. I, I, I like watching Fall, she's quick. Burgess with the soft little shot, gets it to drop. First points of the game. Remember in uh, college women's basketball, we played like four, four quarters, quarters yep. four periods, whichever you prefer to call it. Drive into the paint. That oh. one that sits <laughs> on the air and can't get it to drop. That was really close. Jensen pulls that one down. Here comes Fall. She likes to push it. Burgess will do that baseline every time. High off the glass, yeah, she can't, can't get it, get it to fall. go. I think she was expecting to get hammered. And yeah. It did not happen. Well, and Jensen had a hand on the ball, but she was afraid she was going to end up bumping somebody and falling. There's the floater, can't get that one to drop. Kick out, long three, counted. That's for Gallus. And Mammoth leads three to two. They go with the pressure right away. May was looking for somebody to cut yep. as she was coming up yeah. and nobody was moving, but she does draw the foul. Yeah, that's gonna be on Osmolski. So Caitlin draws the first foul of the game. May gets it into Burgess and she's backing it down. Little hard, yeah. either use the glass when you're up there or drive it in. Good little head fake, Jensen. Yeah, turn ball. Jensen will draw the foul. Yeah. So they're gonna count the basket. That will be on Bonnie Jensen, her first. Will. The turn ball goes to the line. She's an 80% free throw shooter this season. And makes that one. 6-2, Mammoth on top, just underway here. Burgess at the post. Nay will put it up for three, off oh, the glass. That was nice. Did she call the glass though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. That yeah, goes in. Just like that, it's 6-5. Oh, and Fall is going to come from behind oh. and draw the foul. He blew the whistle before, before there was any then, contact. Yeah. Yeah. You'll. So that's <laughs> Fall first, second team. Yep. And Turnbull goes to the line again. Should be shooting two. Gets that one to crawl over. Connects on both. Makes it 8-5. That's a real good pressure there by Ornelas. I like that matchup, Fall Ornelas. Yeah. Too explosive. Carpenter try, oh. She can. Yeah, she can't hold that one. I thought she was gonna slide into that, that glass there and bump it a little. <laughs> So another turnover by the Red Hawks. Coming up on the seven minute mark here in the first period. Mammoth leading 8-5. From the corner, that's short. Yeah, as Malski gets her own rebound though. Nice job of following. Tries getting it into Turnbull oh, and does that it. That is back. a nice pass by Kinty. Need to put somebody physical in on Turnbull. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Well, we saw that last year too with her. Uh, you gotta have the physicality to play against her because she is a very aggressive player, not only on offense but on defense, and she makes her presence known in the paint. Yep, and that's what you want from a big. Ball driving, kicks it Five out. on the shot clock. Off the iron, fall the smallest one out there, gets it. And a nice pass. Oh, yeah, and Jensen gets that one. Jensen is the recipient for sure. Makes it 10-7. Scott's on top. Gala 
the charge. Yeah, they're going to get her with the charge for sure. She was off balance as well, she well, went Jensen flying in had there. both feet planted firmly like a tree. So now coming in for the Red Hawks, number 12, Jordan Berkowitz, and, or Bukowitz, the freshman from New Franklin. And who did we get coming in uh, from Mom? Number 14, Sheen Smith, the 5'5 junior from Hume, Illinois. Almost an attempt on a steal there. Uh, we're going to get number 13, Skylar Bracia, checking in for the Red Hawks, the 5'10 sophomore from Boston, Wisconsin. Off the glass, can't get it to drop it, draws the foul. That should be on Ornelas, I believe. Uh, yeah, I believe so, yep. They're gonna give that to Ornelas. So foul will go to the line. So fall, 72% from the line this season. Checking in for the Red Hawks. Uh, no. Got gotta wait. She's gotta, coming gotta in for wait. the shooter. Yeah, she's coming in for the shooter. That's Shannon Sorbo, the 5'6 junior from Nakusa, Wisconsin. Actually, she came in for Nay. Yeah, Nay, Nay checked in. No, Nay is checking out. Oh, Nay checked Sorbo out. Came in Sorbo for came in for Nay. That's surprising they yeah. didn't let her shoot. Come let in her come in on the first part. Right. Yeah. Long three, flat three. Yeah, but that's Gallus. good for Gallus. So Ornell is putting on the pressure. We started to we do that quite a bit last year against this Red Hawk team. Burgess from the elbow, can't get it to go. 13-9, Scott's on top here. Just under five minutes to go. Gallus floats it. That's gonna, they're gonna say, so they went off to Sorbo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think Kinsey's hand kind of slammed Sorbo's hand yeah. into the ball. Well, it all works. So checking in for the Scots, number one, Josie Morgan, 5'2 sophomore from Washington, Illinois. Dallas can't get that hard off the glass. Red Hawks are pushing it. Nice fake there, good move. Off oh, the glass, wow. softly there. By Bracia. Yeah. Skyler's got, we saw her, we've seen her do that a lot this season, where, where it's that light little, it's like a push shot. It's almost flat. Makes it a two point ball game, 13-11. Turn ball high off the glass yeah. there. <laughs> she uh, used the body to, Work her way down there. Burgess looking to go to the hoop. Comes up short. short. Skyler had a hand on it, but Turnbull kind of pushed it away. Burgess will have a seat as yep. Jensen she, checks back in. Burgess has, it hasn't had a very hot start here. One for five so well, far. She's been out. She was she's been, been injured out, yep. with an ankle injury and just coming back, so. Takes a little bit to get back into that group. There's the wraparound, can't get it to go. Jensen came down with that. Paul thought about it, pulls it back down. There's a nice move. Oh, can't get it to go, but drew yeah. the foul. Gracia had a beautiful move oh, under there. Yeah, yeah, I had, a, had a great move. Good luck, just enough to draw the foul. So that'll be the second one on Gallus. So as Osmolski checks back in for the Scots and for the Red Hawks, number four, Julia Scharger, a 5'5 freshman from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. 
Skyler, a 67% free throw shooter this year. And connects on both of them. Makes it a one basket game, 15-13. 13-19 to go here in the first period. Scott's on top. And Turnbull that will should draw be, the foul. Yeah, that should be on number 12. Jordan Bacoritz. So Turnbull will go to the line again. And she's not the one that the Red Hawks want at the line. No. Spe especially she shooting, you know, 80% from the she's line. She's pretty much automatic. Well, I mean, you'd expect that from a senior. Knocked out of bounds there. Stay with the Red Hawks. 17-13, 3.04 to go here in the first. <laughs> Unable and to get yeah, that one to go. Was, you know, she had nowhere to go. It was a forced shot. Here's the drive off the glass and good. Cora Smith. She had a really nice move there. Slide along that baseline. 19-13. Mammoth leading here. Oh, oh yeah, that's a tree. Yeah, oh, you gotta yeah. draw, you gotta call that one. Well the body bump there, you yeah. could have called that, but could have. Called the called well, the turnover. I, I I wasn't sure if the official was gonna call it. Jensen came, it was up in the air. She had the ball and she came down and she was going to start the dribble before he even blew the whistle again. Like it Had a couple of those. Yeah. They and Fall check back in for the Red Hawks. Nay. And they're going to call Nay yep. with the foul. Yeah. She got her on the hand. Instead of swiping, you just got to put your hand straight up. Yep. the Scots. Nice curse, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> it always goes that way. It <laughs> doesn't it always? You run a compliment and then all yeah. of a sudden throws them off. But still, 80%. I That's mean, you got multiple shooters that are in the 80%. I'm looking at the thing, five free throw shooters for the Scots in 80% mm -hmm. range. Definitely stressed that point by uh, Coach Wilson, so. Sixteen on the shot clock for the Red Hawks. From the corner, off the back of the iron. That'll stay with the Red Hawks. <coughs> Looking to get it in. And a nice inbound pass. And Easy basket there for Jensen. They'll call the foul on. Yeah, they're gonna call it on Bukoritz. That'll be her second, 15. Katie Carpenter will check in. Makes the first one. As Molsky is a 80, 88% free throw <laughs> shooter. I mean, that's just. This is a team you don't want to put on the exactly. free throw line. Exactly, like I said, the Scots have five girls that are shooting free throws in the 80 percentile. It, that's just, it's unheard of. And how many in the 70s? Oh, the, the rest of the team pretty much. I think I see two of them in the 60s, the rest are in the 70s. And they're gonna call the foul on Turnbull. Yep. The hand, and that's the thing I like. Work on her. Yeah. Get her yeah, in foul problem exactly. situation and get her out of there. 
Yeah, I mean, that, as, as that a coach, was, that's what I would be exactly, telling my bigs to coach, do. Yeah, you, you work, you work your, your bigs, get them out as quick as possible if you can. Jensen Although, a little strong on that one. In terrible situation, we, we have seen her play with multiple fouls. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she's and in control. In control of the game, yeah. Another long one. Higgins brings that one down. Oh, nice pass by Morgan inside. There's a walk. Yep. Well, Jensen did a great job of putting cutting, hands, the, baseline. cutting the baseline and, and putting about six inches between, <laughs> <laughs> between her and Morgan. <laughs> or sorry, uh, Smolski. <laughs> So a minute to go here in the first period. Carpenter throws that one up, can't get it to go. But she's gonna draw a foul, and that's gonna be on Smith. Her be her first. Carpenter going to the line. She's a 54% free throw shooter this season which is extremely low for her. Yeah. And she probably just not getting to the line a lot this year. Misses the front end. Connects on the second. 22-16, under a minute to go here in the first period. Scott's with the lead. A 20 second difference, game and shot clock. Nice little move there by Smith. Cutting, coming back on that. Good feed, can't get it to go. Get a jump ball, it'll belong to Mammoth. Jensen, Jensen had the yeah. move, just yeah, couldn't she, get it to go. Well, and she's not afraid to, to hug that ball and, and just start throwing the elbows. <laughs> you, <laughs> know, you can see her just twisting the body there and trying to rip it away from everybody. Enough time for Mammoth to put up one shot here. We're under 10. From the free throw line, that one's off. They go out of bounds with .3 seconds left. So that's what, like catch and shoot? <laughs> catch and shoot if time. That. <laughs> Almost Ooh, got almost. it on that one. That's where the first period will come to an end with the Mammoth Scots leading the Ripon College Redhawks 24 to 16. A reminder that all select Midwest Conference championships and tournaments will be broadcast on MWC TV during the 2019-2020 school year. Continue to check www.midwestconference.org for updates and announcements on fall, winter, and spring MWC TV broadcasts. Tomorrow, Mammoth will travel up to Appleton to take on the Lawrence University Vikings. Uh, Rippon will stay at home as Grinnell Pioneers will be coming down. That'll be a 3 o'clock start for the ladies, 1 o'clock for the men. Mammoth has two players among the top 200 scorers in D3. Becca Gallus is fourth in the Midwest Conference, averaging 15.7 per game, and Carly Turnbull is fifth in the conference, averaging 15.2. Both players also rank among the top 100 players in the country in free throw percentage. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that a surprise? <laughs> yeah, well, wait, what have we been talking about? Yeah. <laughs> So here we go, fresh 10 on the clock as we get ready to start the second period. Into Jensen, nice pass, and the foul. Yep. 
Is that going to be on Turnbull, though, or is that going to be on Osmolski? And that is going to be on Turnbull. So that'll be number two on her. And she might have a seat here for a second as. Yep, she will come out. As Teray, number, yeah, Teray Warner checks in. So they're, they're giving up a little bit of size there. That went strong and off the back. A little hard on that one, yeah. Ball pushes it up to Carpenter. Cross to Nay for three. Off Ooh. the iron. Six point difference, 24 18. Mammoth with the lead. And the travel. Yep. Almost simultaneously, all three of them <laughs> blew their whistles. Yeah. Well, everybody saw it. <laughs> Red Hawks need a basket on this possession, especially after that turnover. Well, I mean, yeah, you look at it, it I mean, Mammoth, 10 rebounds on defense, you know, and Rippin's only five. A break there for the Red Hawks is. Nobody was going to the ball where it was tossed. So it'll be 14 on the shot clock. Burgess gets yeah. it blocked. And then Man, she gets the body yeah. fall. Oh yeah, that was, a, that was a little bump with the stomach and you can yep. see it. And so that's her first foul. Those are, the, those are the things that hurt a ball team. Yeah. Kick out for the three, in and out. As Burgess is there to fight it up, and it's gonna be a jump ball. Jump ball. That'll belong to Mammoth. I want to discuss, make sure it wasn't, yeah, there's no foul there. Right. Cornell is inbounded for Mammoth. There's the cutter. And now the it's floater. Yeah. Oh, can't get that one to drop. Nay will bring it down and she'll be fouled. Yeah, that should be on Kinty. And that it is. And that is Kinty's first foul. Team. Second team yeah. foul. Oh, and there's a kick. <laughs> no harm, no foul. No. Just a reset. So 20 seconds on the shot clock for the Red Hawks. Got to get it in. <laughs> oh, nice. Foul. That's yeah, and that should be on Ornelas from behind. Yeah. And that it is. Mm -hmm. Be her second. She'll have a seat. Yeah, as Morgan will check back in. And oh. Jensen, good positioning there, gets that one to drop. Makes it a four point difference 24 20. Scott's leading the Red Hawks. Seven and a half to go here in the first half. 
from the corner, three off the iron. Burgess rips that one down. Yeah. Oh, and a quick pass up and intercepted not by a, Not a smart pass. Yeah. Warner wants to drive and Burgess with a <laughs> wow. big block. Yeah. Ball gets that, they're gonna push it up. Burgess stops, pops, short. comes up short. Either Rip. drive it all the way or it. dish it out. All right. So they're gonna say it stays with Rippin. They're gonna say it off of Smith. Gallus will check back in for Mammoth. Carpenter looking, nobody there. Smart move. Uh, yeah, very That's smart, it. yep. Time was running out. Now we'll get uh, number 34, Megan Dilly, the six foot junior out of Fond du Lac to come in, give Burgess a breather. Call a jump ball, that'll stay with the Red Hawks. Talking it over. Was yeah, there? Make sure there's the right call. Carpenter dribbles yeah. that off her, her foot. foot. Yeah. Six thirty-seven to go here in the first half. Mammoth has been in control since they took the lead when it was two-three. And Nay's going to draw the foul on that one. That'll be her second, and the second team. Gallus will go to the line, shooting two. So Sorbo checking back in for the Red Hawks as Nay will have a seat. Nothing but net on that one. Gallus, an 86% free throw wow. shooter. Yeah. Oh, and she's not even the top one. You, you look at Osmolski, 86. She connects on both of those. Or 88, sorry, for Osmolski. Well, as a team, they're shooting 77%, so. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Oh, well, yeah. 10 on the shot clock. Into Dilly. Yeah, she's going to work it up. And a nice little nice soft job. touch off the glass. Good left hand move there. 26 yep. 22. Just like that, Rippin's back in the ball game. Well, they've been in that four point difference for quite a while. Just unable to break that long three. Count it. Morgan and gets the foul. It. Yeah. Sorbo will draw that foul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she uh, she pretty much pushed <laughs> Morgan in, into, the, into the stands there as the student section was quick to help her up and yeah. <laughs> push her and get her away. Well, that's one of those silly fouls because the shot was long gone. Exactly. Ready to check in on the next buzzer. Nice fake there, kick out. 4-3 off the iron. A little flat on that shot from Gallus. Ten on yeah. the shot clock. Ball trying to win. Billy will drive it in there. And Put it up and in. Left handed, nice little touch off the glass there. Mm -hmm. As long as Turnbull's out of the game, R I would keep yeah, driving her in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. And Turnbull's about to check back in <laughs> here as 
As Coach Wilson just he sees, he what's, sees what's happening, there. yeah. And Dilly is having her own way down in there. Double team. Carpenter can't get that one to go. She'll oh, put it up. Yeah, Kinsey gets, gets a hand on that one. That's on yeah. Carpenter. That'll be the fourth team foul. So Burgess checks in for Carpenter and Turnbull checks in for Gallus. Four eleven to go here in the half. Scotts with a comfortable lead, 29-24. Oh, that was almost a travel there by Turnbull. You see that hop step? And we're gonna get a foul. That'll yeah. be on Burgess. Burgess. Yeah. That's her second. Now this, this is an issue with being being out for so many games and an injury. Coming you come back. back in and you're so fired up to play that you just the mental mistakes. You're out of rhythm. You're out of rhythm. Yeah, exactly. You're out of rhythm. The mental mistakes are coming because we, we've seen Burgess play, uh, you know, stellar games before, and this is just not her game tonight. You can see as she's been missing the shots. You know, a couple of mental fouls. Mammoth makes another free throw. Makes it a six point difference. Make that seven, 31, 24. Four minutes exactly to go here in the first half. Oh, and there's gonna, yeah, well. No stumble, kick called yeah, on no kick, no kick on either way. Turnbull going underneath there. And Dilly comes down with that one. Burgess made her alter the shot. Yeah. Well, which is what is what's gonna need to happen. It, it's gonna take two to double, to up, double on. up on Turnbull. Yep. Oh, and that's a nice pass inside from Dilly. As uh, Bakoritz puts that layup in. From the corner, oh, that's coming up yeah. short as Burgess pulls that one up. Yep. Slow, slow it down, get it to a guard. Mismatch here. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> mismatch. <laughs> Oh, and Dilly just wide open and uh, overlaid oh, it. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to get a, a silly fall underneath. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's a foul going to be on first. Dilly's, yeah. So Ornelas will check back in as Morgan will have a seat for the Scots. Skyler Bracia checks in for the Red Hawks as Sorbo has a seat. And Jensen as well, as Dilly has a seat. Good minutes there by Dilly. Yeah. No, she made her presence known, <laughs> and that's exactly what you want. You want you want to change up the rhythm of your of the other team. And I'm sure they've been watching film and seeing Dilly hasn't played as much as she did last year. But when she comes in, she makes her minutes count. Turnbull completes both of those, makes it 33-26. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Good feet underneath. Uh, and got gosh. the bounce. I didn't think that was going to fall, but. Yeah, hit uh, Brescia with the soft shot there. Redhawks need a stop here. There's the floater, can't get it to go. Jensen pulls down that rebound. I like that mis mismatch on Ellis Jensen. They had the fall. Fall for three. Can't get oh, it to go. Bracia gets it. Stayed with it. Yep. Well, and Smith did the right thing. She was on the ground underneath. She there. stayed there. Because if she would have stood up, she would have drawn the foul. 33-30. Mm -hmm. Scott's with the lead. Turnbull with the pass on the Oh, eight. yeah. And fall right, comes right out of there with Right between Kinsey's legs. They're gonna get Ornalis with a foul. Yep, that'll be her third. I thought she was gonna call for it uh, before they crossed yeah. the mid court. So Ornelas will have a seat and Morgan will check back in for the Scots. Scheringer checks in for the Red Hawks. Yep. Ball gets a much needed break. A little <laughs> gas. Yeah, she is, you can see she's a little red in the face and uh, Mammoth is going to take a 30-second timeout as they're leading 
with two minutes to go here in the first half, 33 to 30. Hey fans, don't forget to tune into every conference contest this season live on the internet at midwestconference.org. Select league championships and tournaments will also be broadcast on MWC TV all year long. Standings coming into today's game. Yeah, close standings. This Very. Mm -hmm. uh, Rippon nine and one. Mammoth eight and two. Cornell six and three. Lake Forest is five and four. And Knox and Grinnell at five and five. After that, it drops it, yeah. way off. But you look at the at the middle of the class there, you know, the middle of, of the board, and it's they're very all evenly matched. Five wins, you know, it's your t your bottom three. On a You're, well, you know, everybody's playing right now that number four and number three spot for tournament. Yep. Bird just has yeah. that one. To Turnbull Deacon. steals that one. That just no positioning there as she was driving in. And yeah, makes up Burgess, for it yeah. by knocking <laughs> it off of uh, of Osmulski. Yeah, but I, I really thought they were gonna keep it with the Scots there. I thought it was all off of Burgess's hands, but Osmulski must have got a finger on it. So a minute and forty to go in the first half here. Red Hawks have the opportunity to come within one or tie it. Three seconds. They're gonna say, uh, yeah. Turnover. Yeah. Well. Trisha got caught. Yeah, camping. She, got, she got caught camping with one foot in the paint. So big turnover there. Yeah. A lot of mental mistakes today by the Red Hawks. And then Burgess almost tipped that one again. again. Can't get that one to go. Jensen pulls it down. Oh, gets it tapped away. Scrum call timeout. Yeah, <laughs> and Coach Bujalaki does the, the right thing that. by quickly, quickly calling the timeout. Well, the Red Hawks have had opportunities to turn around and uh, score. Yeah. Uh, but just, as you said, mentally, uh, just not quite with it there. And, that, and that's part of the problem they had last uh, Saturday with uh, St. Norbert. St. Yep. played a very good game, but yeah, Ribbon was just really off of theirs mentally. Yeah, and you know, and look, looking at, at, you know, rebounds, turnovers, you know, t turnovers about even between these two teams. But what's really hurting the Red Hawks is the rebounds. Yeah. Where Mammoth already 13 defensive rebounds. That means Rippin's not getting their one, one, and, one and done, one and done. You know, uh, and then you look at look at it, Rippin with only, uh, four, with 14 on the defense, but it's not really showing it because mm -hmm. they're, Mammoth is getting second chance points. Right, they're capitalizing off of their rebounds where Rippon has not been. So here we go. One minute to go here. Red Hawks with the ball. Ball brings it up. Jensen looking off the glass, a little too hard. And Kinty comes down with that one. 40 seconds left in the first half here. Got a 15 second difference between clock and shot, shot clock and game clock. Block there, oh. unable to get it to a Red Hawk. And Let that'll belong yeah, to yeah. Mammoth. Yeah, it went or off no, a to Rippin. It'll be long Rippin. Yeah, it went off of Kinty's foot. So Warner gonna check in for the Scots as Turnbull will have a seat. 25 seconds to go here in the half. This is a big possession for the Red Hawks. That they need is. to score on this going into halftime. And, and it's a yep. turnover. Got to take care of the ball. Well, it was just miscommunication between Jensen and Fall. And Turnbull, Turnbull checking <laughs> back in, yeah. That's more of an offensive-defensive substitution yep. there. Yep. Gonna let her go to baseline. And they're not gonna call a charge. Wow. Gets it up last second, can't get it to go. Bodies flying all over here as we're ending the first half. As it ends with Mammoth leading 33 
to 30 over the Red Hawks. For those of you watching live on MWC TV, return for the second half in 10 minutes. For those of you watching on the Rippin Channel delay, we'll be back with the second half in just a moment.
Welcome back to the Ripon College campus as we get ready to start the second half. Mammoth Scots leading the Ripon College Redhawks 33-30. Stats for the first half for Mammoth shooting a whopping <laughs> yeah. 27, 28% from the field. Unbelievable. Yeah, 26.7%, yeah, it's yeah. just insane. They're 37% from uh, beyond the arc and 87% uh, from the free throw line. That is not a surprise stat. No, not, <laughs> not with what they've been kicking up. Uh, Carly Turnbull leading them with 13 points, followed by Becca Gallus with eight. For the Red Hawks, they, they're shooting 41% from the field, 20% from beyond the arc, and 55 from the charity stripe. They are being led by uh, Skylar Breshka and Bonnie Jensen each with eight, and Megan Dilley with four. Red Hawks, a nice backdoor pass there and get it to drop is Gallus. Well, it'll be interesting to see what changes Coach Bushlaki has made here. You're not gonna need much, but you're gonna need something as Mamas has really been dominating this game. We're gonna call the game. travel, yep. yep. The original starting five out there for the Red Hawks. Yeah. I wonder I wonder how long it's gonna be before Megan Dilly goes back in because she was very effective down she in was, the paint. She was, when, when Turnbull wasn't in there. And even when Turnbull did come back in that little bit, Turnbull had to worry about Jensen and Dilly both. And that, that's and, a lot to worry about. And that's a lot to worry about for a senior, for, especially for one player. <laughs> Katie Carpenter blocked that shot out of bounds. Gonna call yep. a foul. I, I think it's gonna be on fall. That's who it will be. Yep. So Kiana Fall gonna draw her second second fall, yeah. And Turnbull will go to the line. Not the person you want at the line. No. <laughs> I mean, you really don't want any of this mom <laughs> team at the line. Yeah, Especially I'm the starting five here where they're all in the 80 percentile. And as a team, they're shooting 77 <laughs> percent. Yeah. So you don't lose anywhere, that's no. for sure. And makes both of them, 37-30. Increases the lead. There's a three point difference at halftime. And Fall and Jensen, miscommunication again there, just like at the end of the first half. Into Burgess. Fall for three, count it. Jensen with a nice screen there, he saw that. Makes it a four point difference, 37-33. Oh. Little push off there, but no yeah. call. And return to favor with the three. Osmolski. So Carpenter. Looking to go to Burgess, it's not there. Yeah, Jensen. Carpenter. Nay, nee, just couldn't Burgess get that. Pitch just picked up another her foul. Third foul. Yeah, and, it, and that those are the mental frustrating mistakes that we were talking about for someone who hasn't played, who've been out yep. with an injury, and, and is trying to. I, it feels like she's trying to make too up much. too much yep. for the lost time that she she was out. I agree. Oh, and there was a walk, and yep. they're gonna bail her out with a foul. Ooh. As that'll be fall. Yep, that'll, yeah, that'll be her third. Carpenter will have a seat. As Jordan Bakoritz come in, comes in. Turnbull just. Hot as can be. Why, well, uh, 16 points right now. If she puts this one in, it'll be 17. And she, she missed doesn't. one. <laughs> she was eight for eight from the, <laughs> the line. The line until that point. The court, it's just a little too far underneath the yep. basket on that one. Well, the pass kind of took her underneath. Try 
Driving in, can't get that one to go. Nothing dropping for yeah. the Red Hawks. Well, Bra Bracia was trying to get, knock it away, but Turnbull was right there. And Ball will belong to Mammoth. Ornelas to inbound it. They kick it up on top. Right down to turn. Nope. Three is off. Good job of getting the rebound. And the hoop and the harm. And Mulski turn around and will go to the line. Ten point difference, 40, 11 point, excuse me, 44 33. Biggest lead for the Scots in this ballgame. Coach and Bush Lockie, yeah, yeah. going to want a timeout there. Things are not going the Red Hawk way. It's only gonna be a 30 second timeout. Hey, reminder fans, at all Midwest Conference men's and women's basketball conference contests, along with the league tournaments and select non-conference games, will be broadcast live via the internet on MWC TV this season. Visit www.midwestconference.org for more information. Coming up tomorrow, the Scots will travel up to Appleton to take on Lawrence University. And the Red Hawks will host the Grinnell Pioneers. Always a fun time when Grinnell comes to town. It, it is. Uh, everybody looks forward to watching them. Men will start at 1 o'clock. Ladies will follow half an hour after that, right around 3 o'clock. Hope you'll tune in and join us again here on Midwest Conference Sports and the Rippin' Channel. Or you can come on down and watch it live. Yeah, get in here person. early. Get here early because there's going to be very limited seating. Right, exactly. Good thing I have a reserve seat. Yeah. <laughs> Jensen on the top. There's the back door. And a nice, nice job, job for there. Bracia yep. yeah, against Kinty. I like that match up there. See if they go after that a little bit more. And nice drive. Just, you know, Ornelas, yeah. so quick. Yeah, she, she is. And, and, and she's really short, so the tall girl, <laughs> she slides right, right underneath them. Yeah. You know, and, and you, you fall the same situation for Rippin. So we they're, they're both violation. five foot, Nothing. hardly anything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're now it's five I two, and I think fall is five one. Yeah, and I so. think they were standing on a stack of uh, catalogs at the time yeah. they measured. <laughs> There's that matchup again. Yep. Raisha draws the foul as Kinty is. Going to be charged with it. Yep. Well, that's Kinty's third or second, sorry. First team. In and out. These are these shots are so important, important from the are. line. Uh, Bracia's a 67% free throw shooter, so it's about average. And makes the second one. 10 point difference, 46-36. 6.45 to go here in the third period. Mammoth with the lead. Oh, a nice weave and a yeah. shot. Gallus can't short get there. that to fall. Yeah, Jensen comes down with that. Look at her weave in and out there for, for a big, she is quick. Oh, and, and they're gonna have a jump ball. Yep. It'll be long to the Red Hawks. Well, I, that was pretty. That was pretty close there because I, I thought Turnbull? Turnbull. Yeah, I thought she threw a little bit of a forearm in there to try and get that out. So Shannon Sorbo checking in for the Red Hawks as Jesse Nay has a seat. Get the ball in. Ten on the shot clock, going inside to Jensen. Fall from the corner, that one's off. Sorbo there, and, and the basket. Yeah. 
Nah, just I'm happened to slide into the right spot at the right time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be on Osmolski. And that it is, and that is her second. So team second. The Sorbo goes through the line. Smith checking in for the Scots. So Sorbo, a 63% free throw shooter. And unable to get that one to drop. From deep downtown, count that one. Gallus. Forty-nine thirty-eight. Mammoth with the lead. Ball fakes it. Looking the drive. Cut off. And call the travel. Nice job there by Ornelas to turn around and tie her up. Mistake was to brought the ball down low where the smaller player could get yep, it. Yep. Megan Dilly checking in for the Red Hawks. Dilly, nice and job. Coming over. Yeah, and Bracia. Gonna come down with that one. Make sure there's a nice job finding an outlet. I'll see if the Red Hawks will try to work it to Dilly down in the paint. Well, I think they will because they, the Kinty Dilly matchup down there is where Dilly made all her points. It was against Kinty. And Smith tips that one out. Somebody's got to move. Oh, oh. yeah. It, you got to go up. You got to go straight up. Yep, yep. Skyler's got it. She. We, we've seen her do that a lot. She likes to put that ball down once, and you really got to. You can't do it in a situation like that. And there's just a nice pass. Yeah, and that's going to be a follow up by Bakoritz. That's her third. Ah. Team's fifth. And Alicia Burgess will check in as which, Skyler Bracia has a seat. Which means Mammoth will be shooting from here on out in the period. And a rare miss by Mammoth. Well, Kenty, only a 57% free throw shooter. She is one of those ones that I said was the rare one. <laughs> <laughs> and she connects on the second one. Scheringer checks in for the Red Hawks. 50-38. Red Hawks trailing. Mammoth has played very well. At halftime, it was 33-30. Travel. Three seconds. At this point in time, Mammoth can turn around and run their offense because they don't have to worry. We're going to get a blocking call. Yep. That's going to be on Bakoritz. That'll be her fourth. Yep. Gallus, 86% free throw shooter. And missed that one. Like I say, a big surprise. And it connects on the back end. Now checking in for the Red Hawks, Bonnie Jensen, number 15. Fifty-one, thirty-eight, four ten to go here in the third. Mammoth 
leading comfortably. Jensen looking, nothing Yeah, Turnbull just shutting her down. Dilly, Dilly working inside. There you go. Well, and, and, and Rippin's gonna have to use her more. Get a and hand yeah, check by ball Jensen. on Jensen. Yep. Yeah. This is not the team you wanna put on the line. Yeah. That is for sure. That's Jensen's second. Like I said, Gallus going to the line again. Just a huge number on the free throw. Misses the front end. And connects on the back end. 52-40 with 3.30 to go here in the third. Mammoth leading. Nine on the clock. Sorbro stepped on, on the, the line. line. Yep. Little mental mistakes like this is what has yeah. hurt Ripon tonight. And it's a carryover from last Saturday against St. Norbert. Exactly, exactly. You're just mentally not in the game. And this is a game that you have to be in there mentally yeah. today. Hey, you're playing you're, a team that's one, that's game, one behind game behind you in you. the yep. standings. Yeah. And no charge hey, there. Wow. I'm surprised on that. I, I am too. We, we've had a several like that, you know. And what can you say? The, the officials have really done a nice job they today. Have. That that I'll give it. Our, and I'll, I'll let you know our officials today are Mark Rapinski, Alyssa Perko, and Mark Walfell. Doing a nice job. Turnbow for three. Count it. Yeah, she, that was right on. I watched that. <laughs> that. That had like a little bit of a hook <laughs> to it, almost like a curveball. 55-40, biggest lead of the night for Mammoth. And that just threw, led Dilly way too much. Yeah. She had the positioning, they just threw it away, but she's going, I was being held. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've seen a lot of it. They've, they've, the, the officials have really let them play for the most part, mm -hmm. which is nice. You like to see that. You don't like to see the whistle being blown every 15, 20 no. seconds. Makes for a boring game. <laughs> it does. It makes for a very long game. And they're going to get, gonna get an they're... offensive foul. Yep. That was a little bit of a push there. No, it's a screen. Oh, the illegal screen. screen. Okay. So that'll be on Kinty. Kinty. Yep. That's her third. Into Burgess. She is double team. And Dilly just too far under the hoop yeah. to get that rebound. Well, it was the only spot she had to get underneath there. Yeah. As there was a good screen under there by uh, Gallus. Yeah, and Turnbull going to draw the foul. As Burgess will yep. get that one. And that should be her fourth. That it is. Four fouls. We still got two minutes left here in the third quarter. And we still got the whole fourth to go. Connects on that one. And converts on both of them. Makes it 57 40. Fresh and fall checking in for the Red Hawks. Two minutes to go, two minute warning in the third period. Jensen. Yeah, nice little spin move, but she got the, oh. oh I thought they I were gonna, gonna, gonna call, call that push. You saw, yeah. you saw the push too with yeah. the forearm. I thought they were gonna call that on, uh, on, on Jensen, yeah, but. she gave that little forearm shiver there. Yeah, got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> so that foul is gonna be on Osmulski, that's her third. Come 
an X on that. Cindy Pittenger checking in for the Red Hawks, the sophomore from Broomfield, Colorado. Got a chance to talk with her parents today a little bit as they yeah. flew in to uh, catch this weekend series. That is a good weekend to fly in. Yeah, we got snow on the ground. It's nice. They're used to that out there this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> and you get two basketball games. <laughs> right. That's the big thing, two basketball games. Travel. Uh, yep. Yep. Well, we've seen Ornelas do that a few times tonight. So a turnover. One of the few for the Scots. Looking to go inside the pit and journey, gets a tour. Back and down. Oh, can't get it to go yeah, off the iron. Yeah, a little hard off the inside there. Jensen, wow. The <laughs> fall just takes her right <laughs> out. And Smith will go to the line. Oh, you saw Jensen first come running over here to the, the side over here. She's just kind of safe, you know. Yep. That's fall. Big old slide. Fourth foul. Yeah, it's not a good position to be in when you got a whole another period to go. Well, there's three Red Hawks with foul, four fouls. Oh, yeah. Looking on the other side, only two, three uh, Scots with three fouls. So they're in good yeah, shape. Yeah, you got Kint Kinti Osmolski and Ornelas all with three over there. And yeah, ri Rippin as Bacoritz and Burgess with four. And now fall. Oh, uh, and, and that's gonna be on Kinti. That's gonna be a foul on Kinti. Yeah, she went right over the top of uh, Pittenger. Yeah, and that'll be her fourth foul. So that's the fifth team with 52 seconds. So right. Rippin will be in the bonus for the remaining 52 seconds of the quarter. Uh, checking in for the Scots, number 12, Zoe Wall, a six-foot freshman from Peoria, Illinois, making her first appearance. Pittenger comes up short on the first one. Can't get the other one. And a nice job by Jensen. And, and Ornalis is going to get a foul there. That'll be her fourth. Yep. So Ornelis she's going to yeah, she's yeah. going to come out. As there's a whole nother period yep. to go. Yeah. So more Josie Morgan will check in for the Fighting Scots. Connects on the first. Short on that one. Makes it 58-44. Thomas with the lead here. Morgan brings it up court. I, I, I just like how crisp the cuts are for this yeah. Mammoth team. Pittenger with the rebound. Under 30 to go. I, I like that. I like that matchup. Jensen and Turnbull. And Kips they're going to. Wow. I did not think that was going in. Jensen <laughs> was, was so go far off, yeah. underneath the basket. I, I don't know how she got her arm out to put that up. I thought it was going to hit the back part uh, of the rim, the flat the part. The flat part, yeah. yeah. And she, yeah. And that was a great, that's a great move as Turnbull's gonna draw her third fall. Unfortunately, unable to capitalize on that. 58-46. Watch Turnbull look to drive. Smith. Nice drive wow. by Smith and gets that to drop as the clock Winds down to zero, makes it 60-46. Scott's leading the Red Hawks at the end of three. 
A reminder, fans, that all select Midwest Conference championships and tournaments will be broadcast on MWC-TV during the 2019-2020 school year. Continue to check www.midwestconference.org for updates and announcements on fall, winter, and spring MWC-TV broadcasts. Well, speaking of tournaments, oh, it's slowly around the corner. If the season was to end today, the top four teams would be Ripon, Mammoth, Cornell, and Lake Forest. Ooh, that's a tough bracket. That is, that is very tough there. And um, if uh, Mammoth hangs on to win this one, they'll be tied with Ripon mm. at uh, nine and two. Then it comes down to the tiebreakers. Yeah, which are always fun. Yeah, tiebreakers. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it came down to last year for the turn for the yes. host of the tournament. Again, we we're literally we were sitting here the night night before, and we were watching the games across the court here yeah, on the TVs yeah. up there uh, while we're calling the game, trying to figure out w if we're Who gonna, gonna be we're gonna well, host yeah. or if we're going to travel into someplace else. And it comes and down to a coin flip. And then it came, yeah, it came down to a coin flip as we were all standing down there in the rotunda waiting <laughs> for the coin flip. <laughs> So okay, here we go, getting ready. Final 10 minutes of the ball game up on the scoreboard. 60-46, Mammoth with that lead. Turnbow dragged her pivot foot, nothing called there. We've seen that quite a bit tonight. They've let a few sliding of, of the pivot foots. There was a travel. Yep. That one they didn't. That one they, you, you couldn't. That, that one was, was more really of a carry than yeah, anything else. Yeah, and it was literally right in front of the official. He was feet away. Now these are possessions that Ripon needs to take advantage of if they want to yeah. get back into this ball game. Yeah, down but by it's 14. Gonna be, it's going to be very tough because Mammoth has played very tough. Burgess goes to her right and goes right into the traffic. And who are they going to call? Are they going to call it on Turnbull or are they going to call it on Wall? It looks like they're. They're going to call that on Wall, and Zoe Wall, that's her first. Go up top to the safety bell. That's Nay. They're going to say on the floor. Push off. Yeah, and that's going to be on Morgan. So that should be... Morgan's first. That's the second team foul. Not a good pass from Carpenter. No, and Burgess is scrumming it up down there with Gallus. And Timeout called yep. by Rippin. Yeah, it, it, it's smart on Coach Pushlaki. Well, I had no choice. The, it would have been a jump ball otherwise. Right, but and, you and lose that. And, yeah, and, you know. Now is not the time to, to lose your possession arrow. Correct, so. exactly. So uh, as we said earlier, coming up uh, tomorrow, uh, the Red Hawks here will be hosting the Grinnell Pioneers. Uh, men will start at 1 o'clock. Women right around 3 o'clock, as I, they've stayed pretty true to that. And uh, Mammoth will travel up to Appleton to take on Lawrence University. Same time schedule, men at 1, ladies at 3. Hard to believe we have yeah, not, just I was about just, a month. <laughs> I was just looking. I was trying to count the number of games left, and there is not a lot of games no. left this season. Call for three. Count that one. That's a big shot yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, a, bi a big booster. Makes it an 11-point difference, 60-49. And the foul, you, you can't give it back if you want to get back into the game. And Mammoth just doing a great job of, of driving that lane. So that'll be on Jesse Nay, her third. Becca Gallus will go to the line. And completes the old fashioned three point play, 63-49. Ball traveled. Yeah, she yeah. Dragged she dragged that put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The foot just kind of slid yeah. as she went for the stop pass. 
Now freshman mistakes, right? Oh, exactly. And you're down, a lot of frustration is going on right now for this Red Hawk team. It's not a position they're used to being in down by. This many. Yeah. Nice pass, and Nail pick up the foul. So that'll be her four, four on her. Yep. Red Hawks starting to get a little rattled here. Well, that's what we were talking about, the mental mistakes. Off the back of the iron. For Wall. Wall, a 88% free throw shooter. That's Malski, the only other one that's better. <laughs> and she connects on the second one. Megan Dilly checking in now for the Red Hawks. Everybody's pointing. Yeah, everybody's, Scott point, yeah, everybody's pointing now because they they saw she made such a presence. Or the the Early couple part of, of the game, yeah. yeah, the couple of appearances. You know, the one appearance she made for what about three minutes in the first half, and then she was just in here in the second half for about two minutes. Bird just pulls up, can't get it to go. Dilly. Oh, off balance. Had a hand, yeah, had a hand on it, but. Oh, Nate got a hand on that, and she does, and this could be a breakaway for her as. Jensen. Or Jensen, sorry. And the foul will be on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Nate just checked out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she was so quick to grab it, you know, that it, that it, it really, it looked like her going. <laughs> so Gallus will pick up her third. Ornella is checking back in, number four. She comes back in with four fouls. So. Checking in for Rippin number 24, Danielle Waldera, a 5'6 freshman from Taylor, Wisconsin. Comes up short on that one. I always like reading these small town names. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you get them up, up north here in Wisconsin. Catches the second one, makes it a 14 point difference. 64, 50, 802 to go here in the ball game. Mammoth with the lead. Mammoth has just played this whole game with a lot of confidence. Oh yeah. And All a right. nice drive there by Turnbull. Gives her 23 points on the day. Inside to Dilly. And she gets, gets it. Ribbon's going to have to just use Dilly here because yeah. Mammoth does not have an answer for her. Yeah, if she can catch the ball in a good position, she'll do well. But hey, you got to stop Mammoth from yeah. scoring. And, they, and they're going to call oh. the travel. I, I thought, thought, they, thought they were getting Jensen. I thought yeah. they were getting Jensen with another foul. Shuffled her feet when she stopped. Number 20, Annika Anderson checking in for the Red Hawks, the 5'8 sophomore out of Arcadia, Wisconsin. And, and, and they get, and they to get it, yeah. And Ordinalis is going to foul. draw her yeah. fifth foul. She is going to have a seat. That will be it. She had a great game. She's got she so did. much energy she that does. she plays with. I mean, there is no letting up for her at all. No, no, there is not. I'm exhausted just well, watching her tonight. Well, and <laughs> if memory recalls, last year when they played here, she followed out again, and the year before, too. She, she just gives it she just gives 110% every time, and I... I, I've enjoyed watching her play yep. for the last four years. So Red Hawks 
get both of those free throws makes it 66-55 as we just go under the seven minute mark. There's that stop, hop, and pop. Somebody's got to slide up and cut that off. Yep. 68-55. Scott's on top. As they've been pretty much the whole game. Burgess had to spin to the left. Jensen. Oh. Gonna call it on Burgess? I do believe so. Yep. Yep. So they'll That's it, it for her. That'll be yep. That'll be it for her too, yep. As Bakoritz checks in for Burgess. Long three, count that. When the night is on, the night is on. Well, and that's Gallus again, you know. It, she's got a couple of threes. She, well, she's got 21 points now on the night. She is Dilly will get nailed with the foul as she comes crashing in. Or are they gonna say, yep. Yep. That'll be her second. That's the third team foul. Oh, and then Jensen steals that one right out of Gallus's hands. And they're gonna Dilly. push it up to Dilly. There's a travel. Nope, nope they're, they're gonna, gonna call say the they call the foul. Yeah, and Kinty. Kind of got bailed out there. Yeah. So that's Kinty's fifth. And she'll have a seat too. So we Wall will check back in for Mammoth. Dilly will go to the line. In and out. Short on both of those. Red Hawk free throw shooting has not helped them at all today. New. No. They're 10 for 21. And that's definitely not acceptable from no. as a coach. Stop, pop, put in the eight footer. Coach Kyle Wilson liking what he's seen from his Scots. And we'll get a timeout taken by Rippon. As the 508 mark here in the ball game, they are trailing 73 to 55. Hey fans, don't forget to tune in to every conference contest this season live on the internet at midwestconference.org. Select league championships and tournaments will also be broadcast on MWC TV all year long. Tomorrow the Grinnell Pioneers will come into the Wilmore Center and invade the Doc Weiske court or no, field, Doc house. Field, field house. Field house, Johnson Gillespie court. court. Yep. That's a too many names. Oh, no you know, kidding. I mean, you go, you go, you go to a, a facility, and you know, it, so many people have donated money that they have to put their names on it. Yeah. You know, no, like, like right here. Yeah, you got the Wilmore Center, the Doc Weiske Gymnasium, at the Johnson Gillespie Court. <laughs> so if, if I turn around and buy two nice tables up here, maybe it'll be the handsome tables. Who oh, knows? maybe. I doubt it though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just never know what happens. So you got to buy a whole new press box for that. Oh, that's going to be tough considering they just remodeled this place two years ago. Yeah, I know. But they did a phenomenal job with they it, did. and their indoor track is just, well, they, it's, they, a, it's a stellar track. Yep. They uh, hosted a track meet last weekend here. Yeah, they did. It was really busy. Torbro with the ball. Long three, in and out, unable to get that one to drop was Anderson. And that's just the type of day it's been for the Red Hawks. Yeah. Yeah. 
Trimble uses that offhand very well to oh. get separation. Yeah, she does. Uh, and then just makes a nice little flick wrist shot there. and Makes it a 20 point difference, 75-55. Well, fall should have gone up with that yeah. one. Yeah, drawn the foul even though she was in the land of the Giants. Yeah, well I mean it was just her and Morgan just down like there. That. Just like that, yeah. Seventy-five, fifty-seven. You're gonna let him in the paint. I'm gonna take shots like yeah. that all night long. No, ripping down by twenty. Four minutes to go in the ball game. Monmouth with their largest lead of the game. Put up, that's drawing nothing but air. Oh, oh and foot on the line. I, I, no, I think I think she dribbled it nope. right on it. Foot was standing on the was line. It? Okay, as soon as she grabbed the ball, it blew the whistle. I was blocked by a red jersey, so <laughs> I couldn't see the feet. <laughs> Three and a half to go. Turnbull, there's that push off separation nice with that hand. arm. And Gracia got a, a nice block, but then draws the foul a foul on the, on the secondary shot. That'll be her second. And that's the fifth team foul on the Red Hawks. So Mammoth will be shooting for the remaining 321. Charinger checking in for the Red Hawks. As Paul will get a well-deserved break. That one gets a bounce, doesn't go down. 78-57, 3.15 to go. Clock is now becoming a friend of the Scots. Yeah. Stop, drop, kick it back, can't get her to go. <laughs> That's just the way it's going. Yeah, it's, it's. Lit on the basket for the Red Hawks. As we're under three minutes. And a beautiful move down there by Turnbull. Long three-pointer, count it Anderson. for Anderson. Yeah. Well, she had one from the other side that was in and out. Yeah. And why not take advantage of it? Well, you're down by as many, you know, you got to just start putting up shots. You got two yeah. and a half minutes to go. You're down by 20 points. Sorbo will drive. No foul called on that. No. Nope. Looks like Smith had all ball on that one. Knocked out of bounds. Now we'll get a few new faces in for the Red Hawks. Number 25, Daisha Davis, the 5'9 junior out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And number three, Kate Limpel, uh, the 5'9 sophomore out of Port Washington, Wisconsin. iron and a nice follow up can't get it to go <laughs> yeah. Turnbull gets that one ooh it looked like her foot was on the line right there <laughs> and she turns it over and a timeout 30 second timeout being called by So I'll take care of a few little legalities today. Tonight's MWC TV webcast, including video, audio, images, and all other content, are the sole exclusive property of Rippin College, Monmouth College, the Midwest Conference, and the Rippin Channel. Any reproduction, distribution, or unauthorized use of this copyrighted webcast without the consent of Rippin College, Monmouth College, the Midwest Conference, Stretch Internet, and the Rippin Channel is strictly prohibited. 
So it means don't do it. Yeah, that's what they tell you, but <laughs> you can just rewatch it on YouTube or, you know, someplace. Well, if things stay the way they are, which way they look like they're going to with a 20 point difference with only a minute and 33 to go, Mammoth will be in a tie with Rippin after this one. Both of them at nine and two. Mammoth will turn around and play Lawrence, who is two and eight in the conference tomorrow. And Rippin will turn around and play Grinnell, who is five and five. So a tougher game for the Red Hawks than the Scots, according to the paperwork. Yeah, well, here's the paperwork usually don't lie. So it could come out by the end of this weekend that uh, there could be a change on yep. top of the leaderboard. Yeah. There is a step and no, no call. One minute to go here in the ball game. And they're gonna call a body block. Yeah, that should be on Davis. Turnbull will go to the line. Danger Davis is credited for that foul. Stephanie Williams, number 25, a 5'8 junior from Tremont, Illinois, checks in for the first time along with Danny Higgins. <laughs> Michaela Setz checking in, number 30, a 5'7 sophomore from Naples, Florida. And Warner checking back in. <laughs> nice, Turnbull has a seat. And that's where she will end her day with 30 points. Long three in and out. Good range there by Anderson, unable to get it to drop. We're under a minute. Miles Looking gonna, to yeah, just yeah. work the milk, clock down, yeah, milk exactly. it down, take the last shot, give Rippin their, their last chance with the ball. You got six on the shot clock, four now. It'll stay with Mammoth. Rippin will have about 12 seconds if the Scots break it all the way down to the. This is where you just turn around and you take the, take uh, the shot clock, the shot clock, clock violation. Yep. And, oh, 14 seconds, sorry. And that's just you know, smart ball pulling, you know, knowing the situation of the game. Kick that one inside to Davis. Puts it up, can't get it to go. And that's where the ball game will come to an end. A great ball game by the Mammoth Scots as uh, they dominated from uh, pretty much the very beginning yeah. all the way through this. Yeah, pretty much. So I uh, want to turn around and thank our cameraman, executive producer, Chris Jones, Casey Hansen on color. I'm Howard Hansen. Glad we could bring this along to you. Tonight's MWTC webcast. Uh, was brought to you by Rippin College, Mammoth College, Midwest Conference, Stretch Internet, and the Rippin Channel. Thank you for joining us, and please visit www.midwestconference.org for more information on MWC TV and Midwest Conference Sports.